Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In this video, I would like to answer a question that I received by another clinician about when would I get a diagnostic ultrasound for knee pain. Now, an ultrasound offers a very good picture of the tendons, the ligaments, swelling, and the menisci in the knee. And as such, it's a reasonable diagnostic imaging choice for a knee. The trouble that I see with an ultrasound for knee pain evaluation, and the reason that I basically never get one, is that as good as it is, it's still not as good as an MRI. The MRI remains the gold standard diagnostic imaging test to evaluate the knee and its ligaments and the menisci. Now the main reason that I would be getting a picture of a knee is either because I'm concerned about the stability of the knee, or the pain's not getting better and we're considering some sort of surgical intervention. Now those purposes are serious enough that I would always want the MRI and not the ultrasound if I'm getting something. So what would be a situation where I would order an ultrasound as the diagnostic imaging modality of choice for knees? That's a tough one. The answer is really not often. Now, if the MRI weren't available because of geographic location, ultrasound would be a great second choice. Uh, if cost were a factor, for example, if a patient had really bad imaging coverage uh, and couldn't afford an MRI, that might be a really good reason to get a diagnostic ultrasound of the knee. It's certainly less expensive. Also, if I wanted a portable diagnostic imaging test, uh, such as to assess a knee right after an injury or trauma, for example, on the sidelines of a game or in a locker room after or during a the game, then there again, a diagnostic ultrasound could serve that purpose. Now, with all that said, we do use ultrasound to guide every knee injection that we perform in our offices, as I hope everyone does in their office. So ultrasound certainly has an important role to play in musculoskeletal medicine. I suppose, too, that if an insurance company wouldn't pay for an MRI, but you want to have a look at the menisci or the soft tissues, uh, then there again, a diagnostic ultrasound would make, would make sense. There is one exception that I can think of, uh, and they actually came up recently. My colleague had a patient who had a normal MRI of the knee, and he wanted to evaluate for a patella fat pad impingement, so he ordered a dynamic ultrasound test to evaluate for that. So if there was something unusual like fat pad impingement, where looking dynamically at the knee were helpful, then an ultrasound would be particularly useful for that. Of course, also, if for whatever reason an MRI cannot be obtained because of metallic hardware uh, or any other reason that you couldn't have an MRI, then I would say the diagnostic ultrasound would be my second favorite picture to get. However, assuming that you can have the MRI, and other than the very rare exceptions of wanting a dynamic study, at the end of the day, for me, I keep coming back to you that if it were my knee, would I want a diagnostic ultrasound to plan for surgery or to evaluate the integrity uh, of the ACL or other ligaments? And the answer would be no. Assuming I could have one, then I would, I would want an MRI every time for me and for my family. And so I would want an MRI for each of my patients as well. Now, as the quality of the ultrasounds continue to improve, which I'm sure they will, uh, since they're so much better today than they were even just 5, 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago, uh, then that, that might change. And ultrasounds may become the standard of care for diagnostic imaging down the line. But for now, an MRI is where I come down on that question. So I would say get an MRI if at all possible if you really want the best picture of your knee unless for whatever reason you need, a, you need a dynamic study. Thank you very much for your question. Please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have a question or a comment for me, you could leave it in the comments section, or you could email me at drcooper at princetonsjc.com. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video.